one of the things that I think is why uh, people should definitely listen to what I have to say around product-led growth specifically, not everything around company growth, that's for sure, but product-led growth specifically, is that my background for the last six, seven years has just been focused on how to grow companies as fast as humanly possible. And so what's unique about my background is that I've done the old way as well as the new way of growing companies. So when I reference the old way, um, what I'm really referring to is the more sales led approach of growing a company, which is pretty much as it sounds, you have lead gen, you're trying to get people to download your white papers and guides and uh, eventually uh, sign up for a demo request and then you take them through the sales cycle. So. Uh, I've been in charge of large like demand gen budgets and trying to figure out how to get more people to pay uh, or not just pay but sign up for those demos. And then on the other hand, I kind of bridged over to the product world through the marketing lens and was more so focused on, okay, how can we get more people to try out this product? How can we get more free users uh, and eventually turn them into paying customers? So um, throughout both of those different types of companies, uh, one of the core skill sets that I've always brought to the table is around conversion rate optimization which is how do you understand these users better? How do you build empathy with these users? How do you help them help themselves and in turn have very good reason to go back to your product and eventually purchase? So a lot of my experience uh, is more so around the lines of how can you understand your user and help them better so that ultimately uh, they can purchase your product in a product led company oftentimes without ever talking to you. I just think that's still so cool. The whole term product-led growth uh, was coined by OpenView and fully giving them credit for it, I think it was a, a nice name to something that people had been doing for a long time. And I myself had been doing product-led growth years and years before it was even called that. Uh, and I still remember the first time I heard about it, I was like, that's it. Like that's that's what I have been doing. Uh, there's a name for it now because before it was like, it's user onboarding but there's more to it than that because on the surface level of a lot of product-led companies, you'll see the free trial or freemium model. But when you really look deeper at that company, you'll find that they're doing a lot of things differently. There's the marketing approach is a bit different, the sales approach is a bit different. Um, so it's, it's much more a go-to-market strategy than just slapping on a new call to action on your website and bingo, you're product-led. Um, so that's really uh, kind of where it started. Definitely did start with OpenView, uh, but where I kind of came in into this whole approach with the book on product-led growth, as well as the summits and the podcast, is really just training people how. How do you build a product-led business? Uh, and so since I've been doing this for years beforehand, before it was even called product-led growth, um, that's the experience I bring to my background. If I've made a ton of mistakes before um, actually going down this path and so I can help people avoid a ton of those uh, super expensive mistakes. So I think I alluded it to like OpenViews has done a great job kind of building up the category of product-led growth in a lot of great ways. And I love them for it. They're, they're great partners. Uh, we, we do a lot of things together. I think the, the main approach I bring that's different to the table and not just me, but now the team at product-led is just the fact that we really are specific on our mission, which is training people to learn how to build a product-led business. And so I know OpenView focuses a lot on more so just like how you could focus more on like if you get venture capital, how you can grow that kind of business and take it from the scale. Um, so I think they're more so focused on the bigger companies uh, who are maybe at like this series uh, C or beyond, um, whereas we focus a lot more on some of the smaller product led businesses and get them building uh, or turning that product into a growth engine from the early stages. So I think as a combo, there's one is we definitely focus on earlier stage companies uh, and two, we're maniacal about really just helping them learn how to build a product led business and we're not really focused on, okay, you got to take capital. No, we just want you to train you and get you what you need so you can go where you want to go uh, as it relates to building that business. So those are some of the big differentiators. The 
statement here is kind of yes like of course i'm gonna say that uh that yes you should be product led but i'm not actually advocating that every company right now at this very minute should be product led because there's a couple caveats for instance uh if you have the super complicated products right away okay your odds of success uh, right out of the gate are going to be lower than someone who has like an easy to use product with a quick time to value. Um, but that's not saying you can't be product led, not at all. Uh, what I'm just advocating about is that you go through this maybe a bit slower, maybe you introduce a new product, maybe you have uh, a piece of that big clunky product that you use uh, as the gateway drug to PLG where it's easy for people to experience the value and really ex experience it on their own terms. And so, yes, uh, I agree full heartedly with that statement. Uh, you just gotta be careful about uh, how you disrupt your company because one of the things we've noticed after helping hundreds of companies make this transition, often from sales led to product led, is that this is an evolution, not a revolution. And the companies that take this as a revolution and really shake things up super quick in their company, um, it just doesn't stick that well. Whereas if it's more of an evolution, you have much better odds of making this work for your business. Um, so just wanna add that there. There's tons of risks. <laughs> I mentioned one of them, which is, let's say you have your big cash cow product and you just wake up the next morning and you say, we're gonna become product led. We're going to uh, change everything we're doing that's already working in the business and, and just go at it because we wanna be product led. There's a ton of benefits. Uh, so that's not what I'm advocating one bit. I encourage you, if you find right now like you're uh, up market or something and that motion's working well for you, great, keep at it right now. Like you want to, to keep the money rolling in for that business. Uh, but what you want to think about long term is how does PLG fit into this? How could you, uh, let's say, use a freemium model or something like that to get more people who are maybe at an earlier stage in their, their business to learn about your product, to start using your product so that by the time they get bigger, uh, they're gonna be a perfect fit for your business. They're already sold on the benefits of it. So. That's one of the risks. Um, most people jump in a little bit too much with their product without tr starting small. And that's often when they come back to me and they say, Wes, this wasn't a, like really uh, this big change in our business. And I'm like, well, you, you took like a, a too big of a bite uh, initially. This is more like a muscle. It's yes, product led growth is a methodology. It's a philosophy. It's a new way of building a business. Uh, so you gotta treat it as something that, hey, this is something we're gonna work up towards. And it might just start with, could be really easy. Uh, it could just be getting our team to look at user recordings of people using our product, whether that's with Full Story or Smart Look or something like that. It could be just that easy. And what you're really doing is just building the muscle of, we care more about user empathy at this business. Because at the end of the day, I tried summing up product-led growth in one sentence, and here it is. The key to product-led growth is that you need to understand that your end user's success will eventually become your success. So as a business, you need to be really focused on how you can deliver value to your user because if people are signing up for your free products and they don't get value, they have no good reason to upgrade. So it just doesn't work in that instance. So you need to be maniacal about how do we understand our users? How do we understand how we can help them better and really build a business off of helping our users uh, and not just selling them, which is what the sales led model is all about. You sell them before you deliver value. So um, that's one of the, the biggest risks there. Yeah, this specific decision is just hubris because <laughs> they clearly didn't do enough user testing to be uh, seeing the conversations around like, hey, I can't actually use this. Like most people in tech use their computers a lot. That's, that's what they're doing. That's how they make their money. And so it's super useful to have something that uh, could be useful and just use it day in, day out. Now, like how long does it? hold a charge, maybe that's different. Maybe it's not a hold a charge for super long. People wouldn't have this problem that often, but um, I doubt that's the case. So in that case, it's just they didn't understand their user well enough.
I alluded to this earlier, when companies aren't hitting the mark, um, it's often because they set way too big goals um, early on. I'm not gonna name names um, because it's a big company, a lot of people know about them, and I'll save them. So they set this super crazy goal of like, we're gonna get to X, like 200, 300,000 uh, users signing up for this product. Uh, and then they just, they, they tried their best. And they were looking at around like a few thousand people when they were hoping to get a few hundred thousand. Um, so like this, this person was really uh, distraught when I, I talked to him and so, there's setting these unrealistic goals when you don't quite understand, you know, what is the virality component of this. Um, so some of the best things I think you can do early on is just um, get buy-in from your leadership team. Be like, hey, this, this might not work. Set your expectations super low. And when the bar is low, the pressure is a bit off. You're going to think a bit more creatively about how you can solve problems. And so um, that's what I'd always recommend to start small, get some of those small wins under your belt before taking the big swings. Um, so that's where I see a lot of companies get in trouble is um, they make these big cases to their management team to get you know, them going on this project, uh, but they just can't deliver. And so um, one of the, the reoccurring trends we see in companies that are successful and make this transition from sales led to product led is really that they really focus on delivering success because success attracts success. And companies uh, are really all about that at the end of the day. And so what often happens is let's say you have success with one experiment, great. Now, then you go to the sales team and you say, hey, uh, we tried this with marketing. It was super successful. We helped them hit their goals. Um, you know, just adding this free trial was, was really great for them. And, and we had this hunch or hypothesis that we vetted um, quite thoroughly. And we believe that, you know what, if we, we try this one thing, uh, you're going to see about anywhere from 100 to maybe 500 product qualified leads every single month. Um, so we would need like from resource perspective, maybe one or two people to kind of go through and just follow up with some of these leads. Uh, we have a, a hunch it's going to be really profitable and a great win for your team. And this month ends, uh, luckily you don't have to dedicate too many resources to it if it, it doesn't perform, uh, but we have a good reason that it, it should perform. So an ask like that, it's small. It's not a huge one. You can even start smaller, like say, hey, we're going to have like 10 product quality leads every single month. We're going to send them to this one rep, like decide on who that is, make it the best person, <laughs> increase your odds of the, them closing those product qualified leads. Um, and then once they start seeing that rep, like, hey, out of everyone, he got the best numbers. Um, everyone's going to want that. Everyone's going to want more of that product data uh, to understand their users better. So that's one way you can start building up momentum for yourself. Uh, so would highly recommend that. I think this is a funny question because it's like product-led growth is a bottoms-up go-to-market strategy. So the answer is yes, yes, it will give you a bottoms-up go-to-market strategy. Um, but what many people don't realize a lot of times is like that's actually what it is. From a marketing perspective, oftentimes if you're solely focused on the sales that approach, which is more so top-down, that means you often have to transition and target different people, which actually can be quite cost effective because everyone, uh, or not everyone, but most companies, especially in the SaaS space, they're always targeting like the execs, the leadership. Um, whereas if you're targeting the users, the end user, oftentimes it's a lot more affordable to target them anyway. So it's a win-win scenario. Uh, the growth mechanisms, the K factor, there's lots of fancy words here. Uh, but what I'm gonna give you is just one metric you need to focus on to really simplify this. So to get PLG right, what I truly believe, if you pick one metric that will help float the boats for all teams, this is it. Ready for it? <laughs> Thought I'd build up suspense. All right, so it's product qualified leads. You gotta have them. And why I am putting my hat on product qualified leads, if you don't know what it is, it's basically a marketing qualified lead, but what you're also adding into the mix 
is a product data to really understand like who's using the product, who's getting value from the product. So the best product qualify leads, they all measure the value that someone is getting from the product. And when you focus on that, what's great about it is you can really say, okay, like Jimmy actually used the product. He got value from the product. Um, let's reach out to Jimmy. Maybe we can make an easy case for him. Maybe he just needs help championing this uh, to his executive team to, to get buy-in and that's gonna be a great fit. So a product like that is amazing. And when you think about every team and how they could be tied into the product by lead metric, your marketing team, they can be more so focused on, okay, the campaigns we're generating, how many product qualify leads are we generating from that? And that's a good sign of like, okay, how many people are actually using the product? Um, and that's a really good quality metric for marketing. For your sales team, they can start looking at, okay, how many of these product qualify leads are we turning into uh, paying customers? So that's another good quality metric. Your customer success team or even product team can start looking at this metric and say, huh, out of all the free users, how many people actually became a product qualified lead? Maybe it's because we have a complicated product. Who would have thought? And then you can start focusing on, okay, from a user experience perspective, what needs to happen, what needs to be true in order for this to increase. And so it's a unified metric. And I think in every company you need to have that. I know like Sean Ellis, I was chatting with him last week about like the, the North Star metric. Um, and it's kind of funny because it's like, it's some ways it's a lot of the same stuff, just repackaged in a product quality lead. But why I think a product quality lead is a bit better than a North Star metric is because it's easier to figure out. It's just find what is that value impact moment in your product. Uh, if it's Drift or Intercom, it's like the number of messages you're going to have uh, people send and you're looking at that as a quality metric. So do the same. Just pick what is that quality metric for your product that signifies that someone's getting value from it. Pick it, measure it, and really just democratize that metric across all teams so you can focus on delivering value because I'll wrap up with this final word about what product-led growth really is. Product-led growth at its core is when you understand that when your end users are successful in your product, that eventually will mean you'll become successful because they'll have a reason to upgrade on their own. They will have experience the value of the product. You have de-risked them of the purchase of that product. So that's it for today. Hope this was helpful. Bye for now.